Hey everybody, welcome to Mosaic House Online. First off, happy, blessed New Year to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may the Lord bless you abundant, abundantly more in the year 2023. Now, what happens in the New Year's? That's right, many people make New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. I have made them, and so have you. Did you know what the top five New Year's resolutions are in 2023? I'm going to read them off to you, and as I do so, why don't you compare with that of yours? How many of yours match with the most top popular, top five of the year 2023? You ready? Number five, drum roll, please. Spend more time with family and friends. Number four, save more money. Number three, lose weight. Number two, eat healthier. And number one, guess what it is? Guess what? That's right, exercise more. The busiest time of gyms is the first two weeks in January. Now, how many of the five matched with a bit of yours? The reason I'm saying this is this. The sermon title of today is not, how do I become a better person? It's not. The sermon title is not about how do I become a, an improved version of myself. As in, you know, oftentimes we get this notification. Time for an upgrade for your phone, for your computer. It's about better products, improved performances, right? But that's not what the title is. The title is, how do I become a new person? New person. So here's my question for you. What would God have in store for you and me in terms of us being transformed, being transformed from within? As in, what does God want us to have for our New Year's resolutions? I think it's about becoming a new person. So I want to read to you in John chapter 14. But before we do that, would you pray with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, Abba, in the name of Jesus and by the person of the Holy Spirit living in us, would you open our eyes? that we may see Jesus? Would you open our ears, that we may hear Jesus? Would you open our lips, that we may utter the name of Jesus on our lips? Would you open our hearts, that we may conceive the person of Jesus in us? To your glory, we pray. Amen. John chapter 14, here's the context. Jesus, the night before his betrayal and imminent crucifixion, he knows that he is going to leave the world and leave his disciples. And he says these words, his, his, right before he departs, as it were, he's saying these words. So think of a will. What do you say to your loved ones right before you die? So this is really important. And all the focus and all the point surrounds the person of the Holy Spirit. So hear the word of the Lord from John 14, starting at verse 16. Hear the word of the Lord. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and I will come to them and make home, make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. 
all this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, here is the theme sentence. Please write these words in your sermon outline. The Holy Spirit creates a new person in you. The Holy Spirit creates a new person in you. The whole passage is about the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, when I send the Holy Spirit from the Father because I'm leaving you, and then the Father and I will come and live with you. And when the Holy Spirit comes in you, we will, we will, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the truth, will reveal all things to you. And when the Holy Spirit comes, I will not leave you as orphans. I will remain with you because the Holy Spirit is coming. So it's all about the Holy Spirit, and He is doing just this. The Holy Spirit creates a new person in you. Not a better person, not an improved person, but a new person in you. Here, look. You're not trying to improve yourself into a better person. Rather, the Holy Spirit is creating a new person in you. Let me take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Check this out. This is so profound. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed. All things have passed away. Behold, behold, look. All things have become new. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. She is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And that's what the work of the Holy Spirit is all about. He's not so much concerned about us becoming a better person or improved version of you. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't work on ourselves. I'm not saying we shouldn't become better people. I am saying all this, but fundamentally, the work of the Holy Spirit is far more, far better, far transformative than just making us better people or improved version of ourselves. We become new, new person. I will say more about that in terms of what the transformation is. But here's what C.S. Lewis has said about this truth, and he put it so well. Listen, God became man to turn creatures into sons, not simply to produce better men of the old kind, but to produce a new kind of man. It's not like teaching a horse to jump better and better, but like turning a horse into a winged creature. Oh, I love how he puts it, right? It's not training a horse to jump higher, but it's like giving the horse a new set of wings so it can fly. Indeed, the Holy Spirit creates a new person in you. So I want to ask two questions. Therefore, who is the Holy Spirit? And number two, what does the Holy Spirit do? So let's go. Come with me. Who is the Holy Spirit? First off, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He is the third person of the Trinity. First, he is, write, write these words, he is not an it. He is a person. Every time Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit, he uses the personal pronoun he, not it. And therefore, he is someone with a personhood. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit can grieve. The Holy Spirit Spirit can rejoice. The Holy Spirit can love. And Jesus keeps referring to the Holy Spirit as an advocate, comforter, counselor. You see, I think the Holy Spirit of the, th of the three persons of the tr tr Trinity is the most mysterious one, uh, at, at least for two reasons. Number one, in the old King James Version, the translation said, the Holy Ghost. So when people hear that, they don't think about an actual person, do they? Ghost, ooh, what is that? 
different, mm, strange, not a good feeling, right? Okay. Now, at the same time, um, the Holy Spirit is, how should I say this? Jesus took on flesh. So he's concrete and he's real, and you can see him. And God the Father, because of the, the reference God the Father, we have some idea as to what he's like. But the Holy Spirit, hmm. But again, the, the Holy Spirit is a person, the third person of the Trinity. So let me take you there. The doctrine, the glory, and the mystery of the Trinity. The Bible declares there is one God, one Lord, one Creator, one Lord God Almighty. There's only one. All other gods are man-made. Okay? Now, in this Godhead, there are three distinct persons. Remember that, distinct persons. There's God the Father, there's God the Son, and there's God the Holy Spirit. Not three gods. How many gods? One God. How many persons? Three distinct persons with their own personhood and personalities. God the Father is not God the Son. And God the Son is not God the Holy Spirit. And God the Holy Spirit is not God the Father or God the Son. They are distinct people. Uh, one analogy to explain, ex explain the glory and the mystery of the Trinity. Trinity is the analogy of water. You may have heard about this. Water is H2O, but it takes on three different forms. It can be liquid, solid, ice, or gas, gas, vapor, right? But it fails to capture the unique, distinct personhood of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. With the ice, uh, water, and, 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 and liquid water analogy, it's just the same H2O in different shapes and forms. That's not what the Trinity is about. And remember, distinct three persons in one Godhead. So the Holy Spirit is a person, and the Holy Spirit, therefore, is God. He is divine, the third, third person of the Trinity. And this is very important, and, and, and that's why. Because the Holy Spirit is God who was involved in creation, who is involved in redemption, who is involved in sanctification, and who is involved in the glorification. Pardon my all these theological jargons. I will explain them next Sunday. When I talk about the sanctification, I will unpack all those things. But for now, the reason the Holy Spirit can create a new person in you is what? He is God. He has the power to do that. So that's who the Holy Spirit is. Second question, what does the Holy Spirit do? First, the Holy Spirit lives in you. In every Christian, the Holy Spirit resides, takes residence in Christian. Look at verse 16. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. And Jesus also says in verse 2, I'm going away. And in verse 16, he says, but the Holy Spirit is coming. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit from God the Father. And in verse 21, Jesus says, my Father and I will love you. And verse 21, 22, 23, he says, we will come to you. I'm going away says, Jesus, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. And because He lives in you, the Father and the Son, I, we will live with you. Is that clear? The point Jesus is making is this. He doesn't mean to be confusing, but this is the mystery of the triune God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are so one, so together in oneness, in beings, such that when the Holy Spirit comes on you, it's as if the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all live, reside in the heart of the Christian. How does that make you feel? That the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, has taken residence in you.
And the Bible says, this is why the Apostle Paul says, do not engage in sexual intercourse with the temple prostitutes. Because what do you have in common with them? Because your body is what? The temple of the Lord in which the Holy Spirit lives. Your body is mobile, <laughs> mobile home of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, the Holy Spirit goes with you. Whatever you do, the Holy Spirit is there. Whatever you put in your body, the Holy Spirit is inside of you as well. He lives in you. And the Lord Jesus says this to comfort and to encourage you. Second thing he does, the Holy Spirit, write these words, write this word, reveals the truth about Jesus Christ. He reveals the truth about Jesus Christ. Verse 17, Jesus called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of truth. Verse 26, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. The mission of the Holy Spirit is to remind the disciples and the followers everything Jesus has said to them, taught them, and remind them of what Christ has done in their lives, through their lives. The job of the Holy Spirit is point, put the spotlight on Jesus Christ. As one theologian said, of the triune God, the Holy Spirit is the most quiet one in that Jesus Christ is, is demonstrative. God the Father is real, but the Holy Spirit tends to be on the quiet side. You might say he's something of an introvert. Maybe, maybe not. But the point that I'm making is the Holy Spirit, he's always putting the spotlight away from himself and upon Jesus Christ. Everything Jesus said, he will remind you. When you read the Bible, when it becomes vivid and come alive, when it comes alive, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an illustration. I grew up in the, I was born and baptized in the Catholic Church early on as a, as a baby and a toddler. And when I was 10 years old, my mother, she encountered the Holy Spirit. And she converted into the Protestant church. And we began attending a local church. That's when I began reading the Bible all the way to my university years. So I knew about the Bible and I read them out of discipline, out of habit, out of expectation from mom, perhaps. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I shouldn't. I'm preaching right now. So, but the point, point is, it didn't make any sense. It was just a bunch of information. It wasn't real to me. Only after I was captivated by the Holy Spirit, only after the Holy Spirit came in to my heart and began dwelling within my body, that's when He opened my eyes. When Jesus says in the Bible, I have come for you. In the past, I read, I read the same words, but it didn't have the same impact. The Holy Spirit brings the truth about Jesus Christ and brings them come alive in a vivid fashion. That's how I experienced Jesus. Well, let, therefore, let me read to you. Let me take you to the next point as to what the Holy Spirit does. And, and, and this, this is sequential. The Holy Spirit enables you to experience as a child of God. Romans chapter 8 this is so, so profound, so deep, so lofty. Listen to these words. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him, that's the Holy Spirit, we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit testifies Himself with our spirit that we are God's children. Did you catch that? Did you hear that? Did the Holy Spirit make an impression upon your spirit? And what is that? 
Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation, new creature. The old has gone and the new has come. And not only has Christ removed your sins, my sins of 2022 and of all the past, He also brought about something new. It's not like, okay, Victor, your sins are forgiven from 2022 and before, and now you received a clean slate. Don't mess it up. It's not that. It's even better. Jesus removed, forgive, for, forgive all my sins of the past, and he gives me something new. The old has gone and the new has come. And what has come? He has given me his righteousness. His righteousness. He credited to me all the holiness and the standard of God's commandments, which I could not have obtained on my own. He simply transferred that credit to my account. The new has come, and, and, and therefore, as such, I am no longer a slave, but I am adopted into the family of God as his son. I experience God as my father. By the Holy Spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, Abba, we're not talking about the Swedish 70 rock band. This word, Abba, is there because it's not translatable. It's an Aramaic word. Okay? It means it, it, it captures the, the, the intimacy that a child has with the father. It's like saying, Daddy, without, without losing the reverence and the respect and the honor of the patriarch, the father. So it captures God is both this high, amazing, lofty, holy God. At the same time, you can call him Abba. That's the intimacy and that's the experience. And unless you have the Holy Spirit living in you, you will not experience that kind of love, that kind of intimacy, that kind of mm, connectedness between God as your Abba, Father, and you as a son, adopted son, adopted. You see, that is the experience. And that's what's new about this. Again, let me just press this one more time. We're not trying to be better. We're not trying to improve. We are becoming something new, new person. You will not fear as slave. What does that mean? As a slave, your job is to obey the master, to please the master, and you will never know that you have done enough because you could do more, right? So the slave is always fearful or wondering, have I done enough? Is the master pleased with me? So no matter how hard he works, no matter how, how better he becomes, a slave is always a slave. But now, through the Holy Spirit, what am I? A son. A son. Huge difference. I just, I, I just say this. As a son, I may not be the best son. As a son, maybe I have disappointed my father. Yes. But at the end of the day, I'm still a son. Do you see that? When God sees me, he sees me as a son, and therefore I could never lose that relationship and that status as his son. You see? And no matter, no matter how far I fall, I know that God the Father, Abba, is pleased with me because of Jesus Christ who gave me his full credit. Let me take you to the last word before we conclude. What does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit is another advocate, just like Jesus Christ. Very important, another advocate. In Greek, there are two Greek words for another. One is heteros, which means another as in different. The other Greek word is alos, which means just like the one before. And the Holy Spirit is just like Jesus Christ, an advocate. Uh, another word study. Pardon me for going into Greek um, words, but it just needs to happen, okay? Some translations say the Holy Spirit is 
a counselor. Other translations say the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Another translation, the NIV says the Holy Spirit is an advocate. When the translators differ in their translations, you know why that's so? It's because that word is so rich, so profound, that there is no equivalent in the English word. So all these different nuances. But for the sake of today's message, I'm just going to stick with advocate. Advocate is para kletos. Would you say that with me? Para kletos. Para means in front or behind and at the same time alongside. So someone who is always with you, okay? He's with you, in front of you, behind you, alongside of you. He's inside you. He is always there. Wherever you go, he goes. Wherever you are, he is. And kleo, um, it means to argue, to debate, to defend. So the Holy Spirit is always, always defending along your side for your sake and arguing for your case, always. And that's parakletos, Holy Spirit. But another advocate. He is just like Jesus Christ, because He's God. At the same time, whatever Jesus began doing while He was on this earth, the Holy Spirit is doing the exactly the same thing, except it's better for you and me, because Jesus in flesh, He can be everywhere to everyone. He is limited to that Galilee far e uh, in the Middle East, because of His confinement in the flesh. But the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is with everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me just give you one example. In, in first epistle of John, chapter 2, verse 1, here's what he says. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have a what? An advocate, see that word? Parakletos. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So Jesus Christ is arguing, debating on your behalf with the Father. Okay? Now, here, let me take you to in the same book, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Did you catch something strange? It doesn't flow? If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins. Well, hang on, hang on. I would have thought if we confess our sins, God is compassionate. God is merciful. And so He will forgive our sins and He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But that's not what He says. He says, God is just. You know what's happening here? Jesus Christ, our parakletos, our advocate, before the throne of grace and righteousness and holiness, Jesus is arguing, debating on our behalf, saying to God the Father, God the Father, I die for victor's sins. I pay the price. Justice has been served. And therefore, he cannot punish it again. Therefore, there should not be another penalty for Victor's sins. If he confesses his sins, you, Father, you are just. I have paid, Christ speaking, I have paid the price. And because you're just, you will honor what I have done. You see that? And that's what Jesus is doing as our advocate. You know, for the longest time, you know, I thought, at first, it comforted, the, comforted me, the idea that Jesus is always interceding on my behalf, right? But then I thought, Victor, you did it again, and again, and again, and again. And how long can Jesus keep this up for you, Victor? I mean, wouldn't he be tired of you saying, oh, come on, Victor, again? Same sin, again? 
And what about God the Father? No more mercy for Victor. Until I realized Jesus is not going to God the Father with his plea for mercy. He's going to God the Father on the basis of justice for what he has done. And, and, and that just opened my eyes. Now, here's what the Holy Spirit does. Holy Spirit is another what? Another advocate. He is along my side, along your side, and he is arguing, defending, debating on our behalf. Here's how. He's arguing with me. He's, 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 he's demanding, demanding logic and consistency and theological uh, acumen here. As in, when I feel guilty, when I feel ashamed, you know what I'm talking about. You've been there. We have made, committed so many sins. We have hurt our loved ones. People have been damaged because of us. People have, have been disappointed because of us. And most of all, God himself, our Abba Father, we have hurt him time after time. So here's, here's what I do. I feel ashamed. I feel guilty. I feel like the failed slave, let alone a son. No, I'm a slave and a worse one at that. And woe is me, woe is me. That's when the Holy Spirit does his debating, arguing with me. Victor, remember what the Lord Jesus has done. Remember that he's just. Remember he is, he has paid the price. Remember. So yes, God is merciful. Yes, God is compassionate. Yes. But more than that, God is just. He will not double dip. Christ has paid. And the Father has his arms open wide, Victor. The Holy Spirit is always, 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 always debating with me. And that's his job. And he's doing the same thing with you right now. He's saying to you, come to Christ. Call upon him. He loves you. He's your purpose. He is your meaning. He is your identity. Come to Jesus. He's arguing with you. Paracletos. He's also revealing sins in you and me. Come clean. Confess your sins. God is faithful and just. He will cleanse you. Why are you so depressed? Holy Spirit is arguing with you. Why are you so downtrodden? Why are you so nervous? Why, why, why are you so anxious? Put your hope, put your trust in God. He's arguing with you. He reveals the truth. So friends, in conclusion, the Holy Spirit creates a new person in you because He is God and because of His mission, He is your advocate, Paracletos. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, Abba, yes, the Holy Spirit is convicting me, convincing me to address you as Abba, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for this amazing, amazing gift of the Holy Spirit. We want more of Him in the year 2023 and beyond. And friends, I want to give you a moment. Would you, would you listen to the Holy Spirit now? He is arguing with you. He's debating with you. He's revealing the things, the dark things in you. And He's not condemning you. Far from it. He is leading you to Jesus. What are those? things that the Holy Spirit is leading you to address and deal with. Would you say the prayer in your heart? Just talk to the Holy Spirit and bring all your burdens and all your weight before the Lord Jesus. I'll give you a minute to do just that.
And Heavenly Father, I pray that moving forward, we be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we receive His power all the more. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. You are here. You live within us. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Let's rise together and sing the song in response. I see the King of glory Coming on the clouds with fire The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see His love and mercy Washing Amen, amen, amen to that song response. I feel that the Holy Spirit, and I believe it, and I choose to believe that the Holy Spirit is working in and through you right now as you are worshiping with me online. Amen? Amen. So let's take a couple of action steps. Number one, click the next steps on your screen here on our website so that you may take a concrete next step. Hey. It's the Holy Spirit who creates a new person in us. But as I will say more next week in terms of sanctification, how we partner with the Holy Spirit, we take a, an active role 
in our transformation. So click on the next button and use the resources and follow. Second action item. I am thanking the Lord for this platform online, but it is the will of the Holy Spirit that you do life together in a local body of Christ, the local church, the local church, local church. This platform is a substitute, but not the, not, not, not the optimal one because faith is to be lived out, your sanctification. You becoming new is the work of the Holy Spirit, but you being transformed on this journey is to be taken place in the body of Christ with one another. So that's what I mean by doing life together. If you are in Edmonton, we would love to have you join Mosaic House Church and one of our house churches so that you may do life together all the more. Simply contact me using this platform and I will follow through. Follow through. And now let us bring our joys of first fruits and tithing. Let's bring these gifts before the Lord, for they belong to Him, and we do it out of joy, out of gratitude, and out of sacrifice. And this is how you know you are being transformed. Now, let me give you God's parting blessing. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, and even our sacred friends, may the person of the Holy Spirit become more evident in you throughout the year 2023. And God's people said together, Amen. I'll see you next week.